Hello guys, welcome back to Photographics Academy. All right, so today we are looking at how we're able to create this amazing composite. Trust me, this is going to blow your mind. All right, so you know, lately we've uh, a lot bit, uh, during the past rather, we've been doing a lot around gray backgrounds and all of that. So today I'm going to be teaching you how to create amazing composites with your white background, with your white background, without even having to do so much, without having to do so much. So this is the background that we used in this particular one. This is the background. So I decided to keep this digital backdrop open here so that you could see that it was actually not originally this small. It had to be uh, scaled in and a lot of that before we could get this. But this is what it looks like originally. All right, so without wasting much of your time, let's quickly get started. So what we're going to be doing in this one is that we're going to be mirroring everything we did here as I explain it to you step by step. Then we are going to apply it here and see if the result is going to be the same. All right, so let's quickly get started. The first thing you need to do, of course, is to separate your object from your background. So I'm just going to do that quickly. All right, so beautiful. We have our, our object properly selected. So I'm going to select inverse and go a bit closer to know if I'm losing some of our dresses because it's all white. So I believe Photoshop will chop off some areas, which it did. All right, so we'll have this here. So just take your time and make sure you refine your selection. It's going to be very, 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 very crucial at the end of the day. All right. So, okay. So we'll have this one here. Beautiful. Sorry about that. Okay. So add up this area and minus some areas. Add this one. minus this one sorry i already minus just to add this one back on yeah look at her trousers slightly chopped off beautiful all right so we are done we are done this is going to work perfectly well so the next thing we need to do is to make a duplicate of the background very important so you make a duplicate of the background then select inverse one more time so that you have your object selected then right click on the object and go to layer via copy so what we did is that we'll have our object on a separate layer right now then we'll have our background with our object on it which we do not want so what are we going to do we're going to reload the selection of the object then go back to the background go to my select go to modify and make sure you expect you are selecting expand and you expand this quite high in number like 15 so that it gives it border at the edges so you look at this you see that it gives you space at the edges then right click on the image and go to fill of course your content should be content aware then press ok and allow it do the job all right so we we'll have our object cut out from the background so you see the way it filled it up retaining our shadow very important very important retaining our shadow so we'll have our object on a separate layer now and have our background on a separate layer now let's get to work so the next thing you need to do is to pick up your mixer brush too yeah i would have advised you smooth out but i noticed that mixer brush too in this kind of workflow gives you more amazing result and control reason is because you can now blend in in dimension other than just going into filter going to blur and just blow it out so when you blow it out it takes away practically everything and it just keeps appearing flat you have to start restoring shadows at the end of the day which is still not bad if that is how you prefer to do it okay because what we are going to do we have nothing to do with the original background it, it, it will practically have nothing to do with it so what we're going to do right now is to pick up our mixer brush tool and just clean this whole area up all right guys so we are done cleaning up the background the next thing we need to do is to now make it pure white. Remember, we are working with a very white composite. And one of the best ways to achieve that is to make your background itself pure white. Originally, this was supposed to be a pure white background. I think it's just the color cast and all of that. So I'm just going to go to my hue and saturation and just pull the saturation down. Now, remember, the hue and saturation is under the object layer, not above it. So it's just applying on my background, nothing 
not anywhere else just on my background you can decide to even lighten it up a little so we'll have a clean white background right now you can decide to leave your own like this if this is what you are going for now let's get to work now after cleaning up our background the next thing we did over here was that we brought in our own new backdrop we brought in our own new backdrop brought in our own new backdrop so how do we do that i created a group for it so i'm just going to lift the group and now take our time to explain to you what is happening right here all right so you notice it's still like the same size of image i showed you as my background yeah okay so how did we achieve what we achieved all we did was that we just scaled in so you have to place your anchor point exactly where you know that okay if this object is standing here right now where is our head going to be so when you place your anchor point there you just scale in you just scale in hold your alternate and just scale it in so as you are scaling it in you are going to notice it fitting just like that beautiful so if you notice right now the floor I already created and the original floor it's coming with are practically the same color. Yeah, that was why we had to maybe make it pure white so that it looks realistic when we bring it in. Very, very important. So you have to be very intentional with this. And if you notice one more time, I am pulling her legs in towards the shadows because I want it to look like she's stepping out of that shadow because of the shadow cast behind her arm so i need that shadow cast on the floor to have an effect on her so when you look at it you'll be like okay i think it's the shadow that casted it yeah so you have to be very very particular about what you do when you are doing your composite very very important if not it's going to look unrealistic and unachievable in your own so just place it somewhere here and press okay i think it's too far from her head so we'll just bring this down a little just slightly beautiful because i want her to be the main object not the background so i just need to make sure it looks balanced at the end of the day so we could as well just bring this in a little but make sure you are losing that orange i'm going to tell you exactly why we did that coloring there all right, so we have our object perfectly fitted into the background. Now, let me open up the groups and explain to you exactly what is happening right there. All right, so our group is open. Let me open it up, brother. So this is the group. So if you notice, this is my background. This is my background. This is my background here. So next thing we did was that we noticed that on the floor right here, on the floor right here, it wasn't looking quite realistic. So what we did was that we had to cut off the original floor it came with. We had to cut off the original floor it came with so that we can blend it in to the white floor we had. That is why you are looking at it and it's so realistic. So what we did is that we removed the original floor it had and now introduced a new floor. And another thing we did, let me just close all of this, was that we noticed that, okay, the orange of the door was quite too shouty. It was calling so much attention that you are no longer looking at the object. You are not looking at the door. So I had to, we had to bring it down, reduce the saturation and tilt it down a little just in such a way that the color will not be very distracting because we want our object to be the most colorful part of the image so that when you look that is the first thing you see ha which because everything is all white we need to create so much attention on her that when you look you are not distracted by the things happening around the frame and that is why we had to tone down that orange right there that was why we had to tone down that orange right there then of course we restored our shadow the original shadow the object came with our object came with rather we had to restore it back so how did you do that is very simple all you need to do is to i can actually just remove this one and create our new shadow from what we have i can actually remove that one and create our own shadow from what we have but this is exactly how we created it so what we did is that we picked up an empty layer yeah let me open it up for you so that you could see exactly how it was yes this is it so what we did was that we made a duplicate of the original background we made a duplicate of the original background then placed it right over here then used our layer mask to hide it and used our brush to unveil it bit by bit until we have just a bit of the original background and a bit 
and a bit of the uh, composited background all on the same floor and that is how we created that shadow cast that you are looking at so this is the image without the background this is it with the background this is it without the background this is it with the background so you could notice that the shadows are original the shadows are original the shadows are original that is how you can always restore your shadows very very important make a duplicate of your original background then bring it all the way up then use your mask to hide it and just unveil the area you need to unveil and you are good to go so what was the next thing we did on our object so let's check it out after pulling in our background i think the next thing we did was that we color graded her skin so i'm just going to make a copy of this solid color over here so i'm just going to copy the hex code of the solid color that i'm going to come over here and place it on my own so i'm just going to create a solid color adjustment layer and press ctrl v so we'll have the solid color on the object then we made a duplicate of our back of our object created a mask for it then went into color range to have her skin tone selected press ok so use this mask to to replace the mask of the solid color now you can decide to delete one of those you can decide to delete one of the rich one of the images because we do not need two layers so we'll have our solid color on our object of course i left it at 100 percent because i needed it to look very very colorful i know i was going to be cooling down the whole palette yeah so i needed it to be very 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 outstanding so you have to zoom in and refine the mask so i just needed it to spill into the hair area a little then i reduced the opacity of my flow and painted it into the hair just slightly because the hair originally was golden in color so it wouldn't be bad if we have the color the solid color spilling on it just to make it look very very beautiful beautiful all right so this is good now the next thing we did of course was to cool down the whole palette yeah like i said i know i was going to cool it down that was why i had to leave my solid color at 100 percent yeah so we have to just bring this all the way over and place it on our object look at the way the whole thing is looking already this is it without the palette this is it this is it without the cooling filter rather this is it with the cooling filter so you notice that the whole white is now all white her dress the background they are all white but you could still see each of them individually so the next thing we did over here was that we created a curves adjustment layer. I think I need to hide my stamp visible this period. All right, so we created a curves adjustment layer just to make her skin pop out a little more. So I noticed that, okay, the skin is quite dark in the whole scene. So what I did was, was that I created a curves adjustment layer, brightened it up, then pressed Ctrl I, used my brush to just brush over her skin just over her skin to make it very bright make it very bright so if you are looking at the image of course it's a high key lightning from what we are creating it was a, it's a high key lightning so she needs to look very very high key in her own brightness just something like that then the next thing we did of course was that we created a stamp visible layer and added some sharpening to the image which is what we are going to do right now so ctrl shift alternate e then press Ctrl J. Press Ctrl J. Go to your filter. Go to other. Go to high pass. So keep your high pass whatever you want it to be. But just make sure it is high enough to sharpen up your image. To bring more details. Then change the blend mode to overlay. Now we are able to sharpen our image correctly. Of course you can use your mask and hide it. And bring it into the places where you want it to be before and after. So we'll have our image properly sharpened up. Then the next thing we did, which I think was the last after sharpening our image, was to create one more stamp visible layer in order to be able to export and we are good to go. Of course, we will not be exporting in the video. You already know how. To, okay, let me just do that for you. Let me just do that for you. So the next thing we did was I've created this stamp visible layer, Control Shift, Alternate E. And once you do that, you go to your file, Go to export go to save for web legacy then rename it to whatever you want to do of course it's going to retain the original size you brought into your save for web legacy so once you're inside this place make sure that your settings are here it's your 
if your image is set to press to jpeg and you're selecting maximum if you want to have all the details appear on your screen where you are done then you are going to press save and you are going to have your object saved and that is how you create amazing composites that is how you create amazing composites very 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 easy so Thank you for watching this amazing video. Do make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. If you have any question, go to the comment section and ask the question. We will do as much as we can to respond to you. Thank you so much for watching this amazing video. Do make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. And if you subscribe, make sure you like this video and drop a comment for us. It gives us so much encouragement that you are enjoying the content we bring for you here. One more time, this is the before and this is the after. This is the before and this is the after. Thank you. See you on the next one.